just send you all the records, even even the last one. So when all boys chose uh, Ralph, including Biggie. So now, uh, you know, now Lena, why did Biggie choose Ralph? Despite the fact that Ralph made fun of him in front of everyone else. Why do you think that he chose him? At the beginning, he didn't choose him, but later on he raised his hand and he chose Ralph. So my point is, why did you think that he chose him despite the fact that he hated him for making fun of him? Why? Um, Why didn't he pick Jack? I mean, like, if I were him, if I were him, I would, I would pick Jack. You know, I would have picked Jack because, like, at least Jack didn't uh, like uh, share my secrets with everyone else. But why did he? Why did he choose Ralph and not Jack? After all, maybe because everyone chooses Jack. No, 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 no. Jack. Nobody, nobody chooses Jack except the boys in the choir. But everyone else chooses Ralph. Maybe because. Um, Biggie represents what? Biggie represents what? Logic. Logic, excellent. And from logic point of view, you do choose someone who seems better than Jack, or is better not like, you know, Jack was violent and he was cruel and he was harsh. So logically speaking, if you like to pick your leader, would you pick someone who might be who's charismatic, but might be rude or someone who's really cruel and harsh and, harsh and careless, careless about people, he doesn't care about people at all, indifferent. So he used the logic. He saw that Ralph, even if he's not good enough, he's not good as a friend, but he could be good as a leader. So he forgot about his personal grudge and he begged Ralph after all, because Jack didn't seem a good, like, you know, didn't look as a good, um, a good leader. My question is why Biggie wasn't a leader? I know that you told me that Biggie could be the leader because he represents intellect and logic, but why he couldn't be a leader, why not? Why didn't they choose him at all? And even every time when we're going to speak, when we're going to continue reading, we know that even when Biggie started talking, nobody listened to him. So why do you think that he wasn't respected by others? Why? Because his, um, his body, because he's fat. And Excellent. Uh, yes, very good. Because if, remember, he, they chose Ralph because he was athletic and tall and so on. So for sure, on the same line, in the same vein, in line with that, they wouldn't care about uh, like Biggie because he was fat. Is it happening in our real life? Yes. I mean, is it in our real life, people care that much about charismatic, good looking people and they ignore those who are not good enough or fat enough or ugly and so on, they, they ignore them, they don't respect them that much, mostly speaking? Yes. Yes. Is it, is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? Judging people via their appearances, because of their appearances, is it good or bad? No, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. But believe it or not, you you yourself do that without your, like, you know, against your will. Believe me. Believe me. Like, you're speaking, when you see someone for the first time, if this person is ugly or, like, bad looking or fat and so on, the first thing that comes to your mind, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm off. I don't like this person. But sometimes, like, after that, if you talk to this person and you like this person, that, yeah, yeah, he's cute. This person is really good. You know, like, and you forget about his appearance. But the first point, the first time, believe me, you will judge him depending on his appearances. As, as I told you, this is uh, depending on science, depending on research. You, even if you said that, no, I'm not like that person. I'm not like other people. I just, I care about people and I do not judge them based on their appearances. Believe it or not, everyone does that. Everyone does that. Like later on, yes. You can point, yes, but everyone does that. So now let's continue. Ahmed, did you pray? Yes. yes. May, Allah, may Allah accept your prayer. So now uh, we're going to start now. I was just was like, you know, uh, speaking about Jack, Ralph and others. Now, last time we, we stopped there when they all, everyone is, is begged Ralph to be a leader except the boys in the choir. And then Ralph felt sad for Jack and he wanted to give him something. And then he, he made him the leader. Leader of what? He made Jack. He said that Jack will be the leader because he knew that Jack wanted to be a leader. So he told him to be the leader. Leader of whom? Leader of whom? He wanted him to be the leader of whom, if you remember. Leader of the choir, right? Leader of the hunters. He told them, I'd like for sure that the choir belongs to you. Yes, yeah, he could be the army of the hunters. So it seemed Jack and uh, the boys that he was collecting will be hunters. And he will be the leader of the hunters. You understand that? And he said, Jack yes. is in charge of, what does in charge of mean? And play. Very good. Responsible for. He will be the leader of. Or responsible for. Yes. And then he said, all right, take off your togs. Like, you know, he started, like, Jack stood up and he started acting as a leader. 
you see, as if he released from class, the choir boys stood up and they started to talking. They were in control, like, you know, the, like Jack was controlling them. Imagine, it's not a school. Remember, it is not a school, but he acted like a teacher and all of them acted like students. And when he said, stand up, they stood up. When he said, sit down, sit down, everyone sat down. When they talked, they talked. So he was like really, really uh, strict. Yes, so here, now we have a conversation between Jack and Ralph. Now Jack and Ralph, like is, apparently both of them are tall and apparently both of them have leadership characteristics. And do you think, do you think, are they going to be in the same line or are they going to, to argue with each other? Argue. At the beginning, you know, at the beginning, because like Ralph was smart enough and he told them like, lead, that would also be a leader, but of the hunter, leader of the hunter. Now, Ralph is acting as uh, the leader, right? So Ralph smiles and held up the conch. Remember the conch represents law and order. Remember that. Uh, I will send you a file, not file. I will send you a one page, one page. I'll tell you like this thing represents what? This person represents what? So that it will help you when you read this story. He said, Ralph now, he stood up and he, did he say, what did he say? Now, Ahmed, you're Ralph. What did, what did Ralph say? Here in that book, what did he yes, say? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, Ralph smiled and held up the conch that uh, make uh, the sound with it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he said, listen, everybody, I have got time to think. Yes, so he told them, like, listen, I'm the leader, but I need time to think, to think things out, like, you know, to, to make decision. Is it good, a characteristic, or bad characteristic of a, a good leader? Yeah, what? Is it good or bad and in a leader? Is it good or bad to get, like, you know, to get some time to think? Is it good or bad? Good. Good. So here it seems that he's a good leader. Why? Like, number one, he told them, listen, I need time to think, to have decisions, and then... He told them another one, like everybody must stay here. He told them, everybody stay here and wait. Everybody must stay here and wait. And then three of us, the third decision, three of us, like if we take more than like he said that we need just three. He said that three of us will go. He said, I will go and Jack and, and so he begged the three, including himself. He begged the three uh, boys, including himself to go out in order to explore the, the island. Here we have expedition. What does expedition mean? We talk it in the alchemist expedition. Hmm. Expedition. What does expedition mean? I told you even this, this is the first word I took at college. Expedition. You know, expedition, exploring journey. When you go on a journey to explore and find out things. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I... yeah. So here's the first decision that Ralph said. He stood up and he said, listen, everyone, we need, I need time to think things out. He said, everyone here, stay here. Don't move away. And then he said, three only of us. He said, if we talk more, we will get mixed. He said that if we talk more than three, it will be a lot. Like three is better, but just, you know, but more than three, we'll be, we will mix and we lose each other. So three is enough. Now it's something good in a leader to explain his reasons. He said three, and then he said that why only three? So also this is a good characteristic of a good leader. He said, I and Jack, because he knew that Jack needs also to be a leader. So he wanted to give him some superiority and, 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 what did you expect Lena when he said, I'll go and Jack and, and what did you expect him to say here? I thought Biggie. Yeah, why? Because uh, Jan Ralph, he want to, you know, to, uh, to uh, make, uh, to uh, sorry for, uh, to, uh... to feel sorry. No, he even forgot. They could believe it or not, he, he forgot that. So he says that I'll go and Jack and, 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 and he looked around eager faces and then uh, there was no lack of boys to choose from, like he said, and Simon. You remember Simon, the boy that he was always fainting because he was, we're going to know later that he had epilepsy. You know epilepsy? You know what does epilepsy mean? It's some kind of disease. People have contractions, body contractions. You know epilepsy in Arabic? You know what does it mean in Arabic? No. Epilepsy? No. This kind of psychological disease. In Arabic, it's called asara. You know, people who have this disease have a body construction and involuntary movement of their limbs. And they faint from time to time. So he begged himself, Jack and Simon. So now, now, what about Biggie? Now it's Lena's turn. What about Biggie? For sure, Simon giggled. What does giggled mean? Yeah, smile. Not, not only smile, you know, giggle to laugh without like giggle, you know, like to laugh continually. You know, he was laughing. He was extremely happy that he was picked uh, up as well, like, you know, because he chose him. And then we're going to know Simon will play a very important role in the story. Yes, not that uh, long rule, but let's say important, yet not that short anyway. So here we have, he was skinny, 
He was vivid. He had vivid uh, little boy with glands coming up from uh, under a hat of straight hair and hunting down, hung down black and coarse. So uh, something about Golden. The author of this one, he wanted to let you know how each one of them look like looks like. So here we have Simon. He nodded at Ralph. I'll come. You think who said I'll come? Lena. Who said I will come? Who? Piggy. Piggy. Why? Because he wanted to. to uh... Did he want to be a, a leader? Did he want to be a leader? No. No, he didn't. So why did he want to go? Why did he want to go? Because maybe he wanted to be with them, um, make some things with them. Yeah, he said, I'll come. Ralph turned him, you're no good for job. Yes, he's not good. Why he's not good for that job? Why? Why he shouldn't go with them? What, what does like Biggie have? What does he have? He has what? What kind of disease does Biggie, does Biggie have? That he cannot breathe. Uh, uh, asthma. Do you remember asthma? Yes. You remember Lena? Yes. You remember he had asthma and he couldn't run. He couldn't climb mountains. He couldn't like, you know, uh, walk, walk. He can't walk fast, walk fast. So he had asthma. So he says that you're not good for a job like this again. It tells us that Ralph was a good leader. He knew which one fits which position. He knew that, uh, like, you know, it has nothing to do with uh, feelings right now. It has to do with, like, you know, uh, logic right now. He told him you're no good on that job. And all the same, he said all the same. Like, all of them are young, and even Simon is young. It's like, we don't want you, Jack, again. Now, Amr, Amr. We have Jack. What does Jack say? What, the, what, sorry, what did Jack say? Uh, there's enough. Yes, he said three is enough. And he said that we don't want you. Is it rude or, like, polite? Rude. Rude. Imagine if someone like Piggy didn't make any mistake. He said, I'd like to come with you. He said that, no, we don't want you. Like, this is really rude. Three is enough. Who said this? Jack. Jack. <laughs> remember, I told you, yet remember, I told you, Amr will be Jack and Ahmed will be Ralph and Lena will be Piggy. And I told you, like, to have the reaction, right? So every time we see Jack, Amr is going to answer. Every time we see Ralph, Ahmed is going to answer. Every time we see Piggy, Lena is going to answer that. Okay? So he said, I was with him. Like, why Piggy said that, Lena? Why Biggie think? Why Biggie thinks that? Uh, why did he think that it was his right to go with them? Why? He said what? I was with him when he found the hunch. Yes, and I was with him before anyone else. So he said that it's my right to be with you. I was the first one who saw him, the leader. I was with the leader before he found the conch. I was with the leader before he found anyone else. But Jack and other paid no attention. Remember, every time Biggie spoke, nobody paid any attention. Again, because of his physical appearance, because of his disease, because like the, he's not charismatic, he doesn't have the charisma that Rolf and uh, Jack had, so they didn't care about him. So anyway, uh, what happened? Like if Simon walks in the like now, Biggie hung him like you know he Biggie didn't like didn't know what to do, so he just he hung uh, bumbling behind them. Biggie still continued walking under. <laughs> Biggie continued walking under them. Like Jack said that we don't want you. Three is enough. He said that I was with him before he found the conch. Like, this is very tragic. Anyway, Biggie kept moving around, like, uh, behind them. And then Ralph said, if Simon walks in the middle of us, then we could talk over his head. So it seems that both of them are tall, but Simon is young, like, short. So it seems that here, Ralph and Jack, both of them are arrogant, and that's it. He said that she of them fell, and here we have, they were walking, and so on. And then suddenly, Ralph stopped and turned back to Biggie. What did he say? Now I want... And here, yes, I want, uh, I want whom? Jack? No, no, Jack. Yeah. Yes. So I want Rolf, Lena, and Ahmed. Like, he did summarize this conversation. What did Rolf say and what did Biggie say? Quickly. You know, Amr, Jack is going to speak a lot. Like, no, like, I like, just, you know, this is your luck today. But to, to, at this moment. So now I want Ahmed and Lena. What did Ralph say? And what did Jack, what did, um, um, what did Biggie say? So I just, yeah. You know, Biggie, uh, Jack and Simon pretended to notice nothing. They walked on. They kept walking. They didn't wait for Ralph. They kept walking, both of them. Now, what did Ralph say to Biggie? Ahmed, what did Ralph say to Biggie? I'm seeing this. So you told him after what I said. Yeah, no, 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 no. He told him you can't come. Like Ralph told Biggie, oh, yes. yes, you can't come. And what does Biggie said? What does, what, sorry, what did Biggie say? Lena, what did Biggie say? You told me after what I said. No, 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 them, them, you told them. You told them okay. after what I said. Like you told them, you told them what? He told them what? 
But uh, be, uh, that his name is uh, in the school. Yes. Yeah, he told them after I said I didn't want. He said, what on earth are you talking about? Ralph even forgot what he did. He even forgot what he did. He said, what on earth are you talking about? Like, I forgot what you're, what you're talking about. He said that about being called Biggie. I said, I didn't care as long as he didn't call me Biggie. And I said, not to tell. And then you, want, uh, you went and said straight out. So what was the reaction of Ralph? Like, you told them, like, here, I love the Biggie for this. What did Biggie say? When you're angry with someone and you care about this person, you should go straight to this person and tell him, I'm angry with you because so and so and so. Right or wrong? Right. Right. Why? Because if you're angry with someone, if you're angry with someone and you push it down, you push it down, you will hate this person. You know, you will hate this person. But when you try to clear the situation and clear the air by saying exactly, I'm angry with you because of so and so, so that sometimes you feel better. Right. Have you ever been in this situation? Have you ever blamed someone? Amr? Have you ever blamed one of your friends for doing something that, like, you know, was somehow rude? Um, no. No. But if you were in this situation, would you blame this person? If you were Biggie, would you blame Ralph for saying that? Yes. Yes. Um, would you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, why? Because in order to feel relieved, you can never feel angry with someone for that and just to keep it inside, keep it inside. For sure, like it is not healthy at all. So here he tells them, you told them I'm me, you told them about my name. And then Ralph, what was the reaction of Ralph? Ahmed, what was the reaction of Ralph? That's good. Like Biggie, okay. Biggie was hurt and crushed, right, Lena? Biggie was hurt and crushed. Yes, everyone laughed at him. And everyone was going to, to call him Biggie, and he hated that name. This is because of whom? Because of Ralph. So what was the reaction of Ralph? What did he say here? Hmm. Yes, yes, better Biggie than Fatty. Yeah, he told them, like, you know what? It's Biggie better than Fatty. Like, Jackie was asking us, was calling him Fatty. So, yes, is it better? No, of course. No, of course not. Of course not. Biggie, it comes from the word pig. Like, even it's not fat, it's fatty and animal. Yeah, fat and animal, fat animal. But fatty, just fat. And then he said what? What he said again? Anyway, I am... I'm sorry if you feel uh, like that. So, a good leader should apologize or not? Yes. yes. So here we have something good in Ralph. He apologized for making such a mistake. So now Ralph, remember, Ralph represents civilization and leadership. Ralph represents civilization and leadership. So here in civilization, civilization means a hadara. If you're a civilized person, so it seems that you apologize when you make a mistake. And here he apologized. This is fact that he's leader. He showed that, like Jack will never apologize to anyone. Uh, you know, Jack will never apologize for anyone to anyone. So he said that I'm sorry if I feel like that. I now go back, Biggie. I take names. <laughs> Again, he called them Biggie. So now it's his name. He told them take names. That is your job. So long. He told them your job is to take names. So I think in that part, Ralph is good. He apologized for his mistake, and even he made the, he gave Biggie something to do, a job to do, which is writing the names of boys. Is it civilized or not to know the people you are living with, to know their names? Right? Okay. And after that, what happened? So Biggie kept walking after them and or he left them and he went back to the platform. Biggie went back to the platform because he felt happy now. Happy what? Because he took the, the apology of force. It, he, he didn't receive the apology in front of everyone else. But at least like Ralph apologized to him. So for him, it was enough. So he stopped walking after them and he left, uh, went back to the platform to take, you know, like uh, to take the names. And then um, what happened here? Like all the following page is about what? Like the following three pages about what? Um, about the all three of them? Yes, the three of them. They were doing what? They were uh, walking on the sand. Excellent. So what was their feeling? What were their feeling? You know, like, uh, uh, as I told you, I know that this is this novel is very long. That's why, as I told you so many times, we don't have to read it word by word. But just, I'd like you, Amr, to tell me what was their feeling and what did they find? What did they find out? And what was the, like, how the, did the island look? Like here, when you look here, we have here, uh, like, look quickly. Like here we have glamour, we have glamour, and we have happy, we have excitedly, we have laughing, we have talking. We have, they were not listening. The air was bright, uh, you see. And, uh, you know, like, so like every time, remember, every time Ralph felt happy, what did he do? 
every time Ralph felt happy, what did he do? He stood in what? He stood in his uh, head. In his head. Yes. Yes, you know, he stood in his head and fell over. This is the second time he did so far. He did also that when he saw the lagoon in front of Biggie, if you remember. So every time he, he saw something really good, he stood in his head and he fell over, like to express his happiness. When they had done laughing, they kept laughing and then they laughed again. So at the beginning, why did they laugh? Because they felt they were explorers. The explorer. What does explorer mean, Amr? What does explorer mean? Explorer means uh, to... Uh, scavenge or uh, find something? Yes, very good. Explorer is a person who goes to discover things. Now they start talking. Where we go to the end of the island? Ralph said that we should go to the end of the island and look around the corner. He said, if it is an island. So till now, they didn't know for sure if it's island, an island or not. They didn't know for sure if it's an island or not. So now, uh, toward the end of the afternoon, yes, here. And after that, what happened? Like this page and the following page, uh, it's a description of how big, how big and how great and how magnificent, how fascinating the island is and how hard uh, their course, like, you know, their, um, let's say, like their way was, like they have to climb mountains and they have, you know, like they were even bruised because they have to go up and down. And even here they had to uh, climb a mountain and they saw a track and then they asked who made this kind of track. Like Ralph stood by him and said that men, people, and Jack said no, animals. And then like, okay, they continue going on. And then this, it, it was a little bit difficult. So anyway, they were started moving on and somehow they moved up, they went, uh, they climbed a mountain. Okay, so it was somehow uh, perhaps like, uh, you know, emerged in this tangled and perhaps, you know, tangled at perhaps the most difficult moment. Ralph turned with shining eyes to the other, wacko, wizard, smashing. So everyone, they, they were happy. You know, they were happy. They were extremely happy. Here we have pleasure, but they didn't know why they were happy. It was very hot and they were exhausted and they were dirty, but they were very happy. They felt happy. They felt in control. They felt they're seeing something that nobody else saw before. And Jack said, this is real exploring. I bet nobody has been here before. Jack, remember, always wanted to be a leader and wanted to be like, like the one who did things that nobody else did before. And Ralph said, okay, let's have a map. We can draw a map. And then we didn't have paper, so how could we have a map? And then Simon said, we could make scratches on bark. What does bark mean, bark? It's bark. a kind of... Uh... The bark, I mean, uh, uh, the, when they want uh, the... I mean, yirkin, irrakna. No, no, honey, no, honey. Uh, park, this is bark, not park. This bark has two meanings. One of them, do you know the sound of dogs? Yes, yeah, I know. This is barking. I tell you about this joke. Uh, someone, an Arabian, went to, uh, I don't know, Canada or America, and he said, yeah, please, I'd like to bark. I'd like to bark. So the one replied, bark anywhere. Like, he, he should have said, I'd like to park. Uh, you see? When he said, I'd like to bark, the man understood that he would like to make the sound of dog. He said that, okay, bark anywhere. Uh, but just, you know, he wanted to say, I want to park. He said, like, uh, where should I park? So here we have bark. Bark here has two meanings. The first one is the sound of dogs, like the, the dog's sound. And the sound, the second meaning, it means the outer part of the tree. You know the tree? It has this kind of outer part. Usually people use it in order to write on or like they can use it in order to script on. Okay, so he says that we can just write on trees and then rub black uh, stuff in it. Uh, and then again, like you know, they were like shining eyes in the globe. Like they were very happy here. So far, so good. So far, so good. And uh, then they keep uh, continue climbing the mountain. And again, description of trees and description of their, like they were exhausted. And then they said, look, look, like high over the end of the island, the shutter drop lift up, lifted up their uh, socks and chimney. This one against which Jacqueline moved with a grating sound when they pushed, come on, but no, come on on the top. Like they wanted to go to the summit. So it means, what is the summit? What is the summit? Uh, uh, the top. Yeah, yeah, the highest part in the mountain. So he said that he wanted to not, it, is it easy to climb a mountain? No. 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 So, but just they, they did it, they did it. It was really hard. They were tired, they were hungry, they were exhausted. Uh, but still, they didn't stop and still they were extremely happy with that. So then they come back, like, you know, they said heave, 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 and they increased and they wanted to uh, throw a rock on the top. So they, they threw a, a very big rock like as a pendulum, like, you know, the, uh, this is the pendulum, it's like um, this kind of, uh, of hand in the, in, in, uh, in the clock, they call it pendulum, you know, it's like you keep moving, especially in the old clocks and so on. So they kept heaving the rock and increase, increase heaving it. And then the rock 
lighter points on one, two, and decided not to return. Move through the air, fill, struck, turned over, lift, droning through the air, and smashed a deep hole in the canopy of the forest. What happened? They went up the mountain, and then they, they pushed a very heavy rock to the, the ground. Then, this is, a, this is good or bad. Why did they do that? Why did they throw a rock from a mountain? Why? To uh, mark the place? To mark the place? No, just, it is not necessarily. There, there were no one in the, in the island except them. I mean, like they didn't have enemies to mark any place. But this is destruction or not? This is destruction or not? Like, you know, when did they do that? When did they do that? What happened? They smashed, smashed a deep hole in the canopy. They smashed a deep hole in the canopy of the first, like, you know, the shade of the first. And even like they made birds flew, like birds, they made birds flow, fly, sorry, they made birds fly. And then like, they might somehow kill an animal. And this is though, this is the same as enraged monster. Enraged monster, like, they, like it was like a bomb. Like they said, like, like a bomb. Why did you do that? Was it necessary? Was it necessary? Like, you know, was it necessary to do that? No. It is not, it wasn't that, yeah, it could, like, like it, yeah, maybe like the rock made it hard for them, but it wasn't that kind of necessary to do that. They could have, like, you know, uh, work immediately. But anyway, like, they, the way to the top was easy after that. They reached the last stretch rock to stop Golly. Like, you know, he was, like he said, the lip of the circular hollow on the side of the mountain. This was filled with blue flower, rock plants, and some sort, and overflow hung from the events and spilled the lavishly. He said the description of the top of the mountain, and it was great. It was great. You see, like, here, blue flower filled with a blue flower, rock plant with some sort. And here, like he said that lavishly, this is very uh, positive words. And the air was thick with butterflies, butterflies lifting, fluttering, settling. So he beyond the hollow was a square top of the mountain and soon they were standing on it. So now I'd like you to imagine the three boys standing on the top of a very high mountain in on the island. So when you are at that place, what would you see? When you are, or if you were on the top of the island, like a mountain on an island, yes. What would you see? I would see the ocean. Yeah, the ocean, only the ocean or everything else? I see uh, the whole island and the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw everything on the island. They saw everything on the island. They saw the ocean. So was it good or bad? Good. Extremely good. And what was the first reaction of Ralph? For sure, he couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't stand on his head here. He couldn't stand on his head here. There is no. There is no place to stand on his head for. So, but here uh, in. So Ralph turned to the other and he said, "This belongs to us." What does it mean? Ahmed, this belongs to us. What does it mean? The island belongs to them. Yeah, it means that this is our place. So if it's if something is yours, would you like to care about it or not? Yeah. Yes, this is your. It belongs like it belongs to you. So you will make sure that it's good. You will make sure not to destroy it because it's yours. You see this one? So here again, we have uh, the description of the island and description of like everything, how everything looked. And the boys surveyed all this, they looked out at sea. They were high up and afternoon had advanced. The view was not rubbed of sharp, sharpness by mirage. So it was, the view was amazing. So now that's why, remember in chapter one, the island was a part of heaven. I told you that so many times, remember that. Why? Because nobody were living there. Nobody was living there. It was natural. Animals, uh, butterflies, flowers, greenery, trees, different, so many different kinds of trees, balmy trees, undergrowth, like a lot of trees. So the, the boys, for the first time, they went up the mountain and they saw everything. It was amazing. So he said, Teacher, that oh, yes, honey. Are we going to do the chapter two today? Yeah, you know, chapter two is very short. It's just 15, 15 pages only. You see, we're going to finish this one, like in, I think maybe 10 minutes, because like it doesn't just, you know, it doesn't have a lot of uh, good points or just, you know, a lot of main points. And then we're going to start chapter two. Why? Because after finishing chapter one and chapter two, we're going to have a quiz. But the quiz doesn't have to do with words. It has to do with under, with meanings. You know, I mean, like with events, what was happening with boys, not with words. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So never mind. Like, I mean, like the second chapter is very short. If you read it, you feel like it's not that long at all. So here, what were we?
Yeah, so here they were standing on the top of the mountain and they were, like, as I told you, amazed by uh, the looks and amazed by the landscape. So here, um, like Jack pointed down, that's where we landed, like the crash. Beyond falls and cliffs, there was a gash visible in the trees. There were splintered the trunks, then the drag leaving only a fringe of balm between the scar and the sea. There too, jutting into the lagoon was the platform with insect-like figures moving near it. Oops, imagine like here, they saw the place uh, where they crashed and also they see the platform and they said insect-like figures, like the boys, the small boys were the same, was very young as an insect, like as insects, insect-like figures, like it refers to the boys moving near it. So the boys from very up there looked like insects, very small, very small and very young. So here it said that they saw them, they were very up and then they, uh,